Did you know that you could create a mobile app with no coding using JotForm? From restaurants to HR teams to healthcare professionals, JotForm apps allows you to create an app for your business, bundle your forms, create internal portals, and more. They have over 200 templates to choose from, and the apps can be instantly downloaded on any device. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to create your first app using this new feature. Without further ado, let's hop in. Before we hop into the step-by-step -step tutorial to show you how to create your very first app using JotForm apps, I want to show you what is possible. So utilizing this technology, you'll be able to build an app for your business. You'll be able to customize your mobile app with forms, links, and your company's branding, and users will be able to download your app on any device. You'll be able to bundle your forms in one place that's easy for your users to access, and you'll be able to create company portals where you can store internal forms and documents in a custom company portal for easy access, no matter where employees and customers are. So what you'll see when you log in is you will have access to 200 plus app templates. You can utilize those or you can start from scratch. When you open it up, you'll be able to use a drag and drop builder, customizing the app to match your brand. When you're done, you'll be able to share your app via a link an email or QR code. Of course, you'll also be able to directly download the app to your device and access it at any time. So to open up JotForm apps, you'll want to log into your JotForm account and click in the top left-hand corner by My Forms and switch it to My Apps. From there, you will see a purple button that says Create App and give that a click. You can start from scratch or you can utilize a template. For this example, we're going to utilize a template. You can search the templates by searching in the search bar. You can scroll down to see examples. You can also look at the categories on the side. When you have found an app template that looks close to what you're going to need, click on preview. From there, you'll be able to see a brief description. You'll be able to see how the app will appear on multiple devices from a cell phone to a tablet to a computer, and you can see the app in action. When you've decided on a template, simply click on the Use Template button, and this will open up the drag and drop builder. Now, what I suggest you do to begin with is scan through the template and see which elements you don't need in your app. When you see an element that you don't need, you can hover over it and you can click on the trash can, deleting that area. So if you didn't need this image gallery, you could hover and get rid of that, hover and click on delete. Once you've deleted the elements that you don't need, you can add new elements. One thing to take note of is this template has two pages. You can see that notated in the bottom left-hand side, the home page and the feedback page. If you'd like to add a page, you can click on add a page at the bottom or you can add a page by clicking on the page breaks. Now, if you need to add a new element, you can click on the plus sign on the left-hand side and you can add basic elements like a form, heading, paragraph, link, document, image, or button, a featured widget, a data element, a page element, or you can search on the widgets tab, which will provide you with even more options that you can drag into your app to enhance your user experience. So if I were in your position, again, I would start with deleting things that don't seem like a good fit, adding the new elements, and then finally customizing that branding. 
Now, one thing to take note of is these buttons are connected to forms. And when you create this app, you also create the form attached to it. If you want to edit the form, you just hover, click on edit form, and in a new tab, you'll be able to edit your form just like you would any other form in JotForm. You can add form elements, you can delete them, add your branding, etc. but that is how you're going to access those forms. Don't forget to rename them as well, something that makes sense for your brand and for where you want the information to go. In order to customize the background image, you'll want to click on the paint roller on the right-hand side, and that's going to open up the app designer. From there, you can remove the image, upload an image of your choice, you can change the color scheme and change the font family. Now, if you also want to change the app layout, you can click on app layouts on the second tab and you'll see the current layout is selected as the default and you can change the layout here. So if you don't like how it appears right out of the gate, this is where you would change those options. The last thing I wanna show you how to customize is this logo and the name. In order to change that, you'll just need to click on it. You'll see the general will change the app title and the app description. The logo will change the icon, which you can select a new one from this list if you like, and style will provide you with additional ways to customize the look and feel. So what we'll do here is we'll call this my first app and we'll play around with changing the icon to this film image. The app icon is synced with the app logo. So you'll see that when we get to the publish page of the app builder. So now that everything is in place, we've customized it like we wanted to, we've deleted the elements that we didn't need, we edited the forms attached to the buttons, now we need to think about how can we share this app with our audience. So what we'll need to do first is go to settings and you've got three areas that you can customize before you hit publish. Your app settings, your app name and icon, and your splash screen. If for some reason your event or whatever you create the app for is time-based and you don't want the app to be available after a certain date, you can change under app status to disable on a date. So this is a good fit for a conference app where you want to disable the app after this year's conference and create a new one for next year's conference. You can change the app icon and name here. So again, we could call it my first app and you can edit the icon here. What's great is not only does it change at the top, but it also shows you a preview image of how your app would appear if downloaded to a phone. You can also edit the splash screen that appears when your users open your app on mobile devices. To customize that, click on Customize, which will pop out the option to change the background color and the font color. You can also preview your app by sliding it on the right-hand side and it will show you what your app looks like on both a phone, tablet, and desktop. What's really great about the preview mode is you can also change the orientation of the app to show how the app responds to being turned sideways on a mobile device. So when you're done previewing it, you've updated your settings. Now what you want to do is hit publish. Now you can edit your settings for the published link by clicking on settings. If you only want people within your organization to have access to it, click on company access. Invited people, click on private access. Otherwise, your default will be public access. 
You can also require registration for your app if need be. Now you're going to be provided with a direct link to your app, which you can copy and paste in an email. If you don't wanna email directly from here, you could post it on social media, however you'd like. You can open it up in a new tab to see how it appears on a desktop device. You can use this area to share by email or you can create a QR code. The QR code could be very useful for an in-person conference. You could have that available as people check in so they can simply scan the QR code and get access to your app. So the last thing we're going to do is open our app on a desktop device in a new tab and you'll see that you can add my first app to your home screen if you do this it will install this application on your home screen for quick and easy access when you're on the go so again the purpose of jot form apps is to help you to consolidate your forms in one spot and also provide other useful information for your customers without having to use code if you already have a jot form account you'll have access to this feature and i encourage you to give it a try Thank you so much to JotForm for sponsoring this video. If you would like to create your app today, you can go to lashondabrown.com slash JotForm to create your account. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe because I'll teach you how to grow your biz without breaking the bank. Until next time, ta-ta for now.